welcome back to the black metal promo, today we talk about one of the pioneer of symphonic black metal band Emperor, from Norway, before starting, if you are new to this channel, make sure to like this video, and subscribe to this channel, let's get started. <laughs> Emperor is a Norwegian black metal band formed in 1991, the group was founded by Isen, guitar and vocal, and Samoth, first drums and then guitar. Emperor is one of the most interesting most controversial bands and play an important role in the inner circle of Norwegian black metal, before forming a Emperor band, Isen and Samoth met at a rock music seminar. The two young men began playing together under various names, first Dark Device, then Zerasia, then Embryonic. The group soon evolved into the now well-known band, Thou Shalt Suffer. Then Samoth wrote music outside of Thou Shalt Suffer, and together with Isen and a new bass player called, Mortis, and shortly after they formed Emperor, after a short while together, the band released a demo entitled, Wrath of the Tyrant, it quickly gained popularity in the underground and attracted the attention towards the band. Wrath of the Tyrant was originally distributed by the band as a demo shortly after it was recorded. This original demo tape had a picture of a Chimera on the cover. In 1994 it was re-released through Wild Rag Records with two bonus tracks and different artwork. Short, who didn't join the band until 1993, is the person who appears on this cover. A limited edition 12 vinyl was released by Head Not Found Records in 1995, this version featured a photograph of the Scott Monument in Edinburgh as new cover art. In 1998, it was remastered and released with the tracks from the Emperor EP. There are two versions of this re release. The Candlelight Records version has the cover of the Emperor EP and features video footage of live performances from the band, while the Century Black version has a different cover and lacks of the video footage. Most of the songs on Wrath of the Tyrant were later re recorded by the band. Wrath of the Tyrant and Night of the Graveless Souls were re-recorded in December 1992 for the Emperor EP. Ancient Queen, which is Sabbath and Lord of the Storms were re-recorded during the same session and released on As the Shadows Rise. My Empire's Doom was re-recorded and renamed Beyond a Great Vast Forest on the band's debut album, In the Nightside Eclipse. Moon Over Karasher was re-recorded with Jan Axel Hellhammer Blomberg on drums, and released on the compilation Nordic Metal, a tribute to Euronymous in 1995. All lyrics are written by Mortis, all music is composed by Samot and Isen. On this demo, Samot, drums, songwriter, vocals, backing, track 7. Mortis, bass, lyrics, keyboards, track 7, 9. Isen, vocals, guitars, songwriter. Track on this demo are 1 Introduction 2 Ancient Queen 3 My Empire's Doom 4 Forgotten Centuries 5 Night of the Graveless Souls 6 Moon Over Karasher 7 Witches Sabbath 8 Lord of the Storms 9 Wrath of the Tyrant Soon afterwards demo, a record contract was signed, Samoth moved to rhythm guitar, Isen continued the vocal and lead guitars, and Faust was recruited as a drummer. Emperor released their debut EP, Emperor, under Candlelight Records. The band then was signed to the infamous first black metal label, Death Like Silence Productions, and planned to release their next album soon, though the band never managed to release any material while signed to DSP. In the summer of 1992, a series of events were set in motion by the black metal inner circle. Members of the Norwegian black metal scene began a wave of arson attacks on Christian churches. By 1996, there had been at least 50 attacks in Norway. Vikerns and Euronymous had allegedly plotted to bomb the Nidaros Cathedral, which appears on the album cover, the musicians Faust and Smoth, both of Emperor, and Jorn Inga Tunsberg, of Hades Almighty, were also convicted for church arsons. Those convicted for church burnings showed no remorse and described their actions as a symbolic retaliation against Christianity in Norway. 
Mayhem drummer Hellhammer said he had called for attacks on mosques and Hindu temples, because they were more foreign. Also in 1992, drummer Faust who lived in Lillehammer, and in the newly constructed Olympic Park met a man named, Magne Andreessen, approached him and suggested that they take a walk in the nearby forest. Faust agreed, and, once in the forest, Faust claimed the man began to make strong sexual advances towards him. Faust then stabbed the man to death, kicking him in the head afterward to ensure that he was dead. He was not convicted until two years later. The day after Faust committed the murder, he went with Euronymous of Mayhem and Bard Vikerns of Burzum to burn the Hallmenkollen Chapel in Oslo. In the summer of 1993, the band began working on their first full-length album. Emperor ceased wearing corpse paint, they stated that it was becoming a trend and losing its original significance and symbolism, in autumn of that year, the police began to investigate the murder of Euronymous of Mayhem, naming Bard Vikerns as a suspect, this investigation eventually led to the incarceration of Samoth for arson, and of Faust for the murder of Magne Andreessen. In 1994, Samoth was sentenced to 16 months in prison for burning the Skjol church in Vindafjord, together with Vard Vikerns. They committed the arson during a pause in the recording of the Burzum EP Ask, Ashes. In 1994, In the Nightside Eclipse was released, and earned Emperor widespread acclaim and a large fan base. It was their only album to feature drummer Faust and one-time bassist Short. Considered a landmark in the black metal scene, the album has been ranked by critics as one of the most influential particularly for the second wave of black metal, and has been frequently described as a classic by music critics. The album has gone on to influence countless bands, with many considering it the first true symphonic black metal album, although all the key elements of black metal are present in this album, such as fast tremolo picked guitar passages, harsh screams, and raw, lo-fi production. The use of symphonic keyboard sections is a key part of the album's distinctive sound. According to Steve Huey of All Music, even if the keyboards mostly just outline basic chord changes, they add a melancholy air to all the furious extreme sounds, turning the one-note ugliness of black metal into something emotionally complex. It also contains some of Emperor's best-known tracks, I Am the Black Wizards and Inoa Satana. Most of the music was written and rehearsed before the band entered the studio, however much of the symphonic keyboard sections were composed in the studio, at the time of recording as the band did not then have a permanent keyboard player. Some of the lyrics on the final version of the album were partially written by Mortys before he left the band. Samoth has suggested that the frequent use of the word emperor in the lyrics, became a kind of metaphor, for our own entity, for the dark lord, for the devil, for the strong and mighty. Samoth has cited the power of Norwegian nature as a key inspiration on Emperor's music and this album in particular. They also expressed a fascination with the Viking Age, Tolkien's literature, the story of Dracula, as well as everything related to Transylvania, the Carpathian Mountains, the dark corners of Eastern Europe, and folklore. Issen explained that he never read much of Tolkien's work, although he consciously made use of the language and imagery of fantasy. In 2009, IGN included in the Nightside Eclipse in their 10 Great Black Metal Albums list, according to IGN, Emperor inspired the wave of overtly technical black metal bands that would rule the underground in the early 2000s. This album has influenced bands such as Demu Borger and Cradle of Filth. In July 2014, in the Nightside Eclipse was listed at number 3 in Guitar World magazine's list of super unknown, 50 iconic albums that defined 1994. In 2021, it was elected by Metal Hammer as the best symphonic metal album of all time. Matt Heffy of Trivium wrote that, Emperor had crafted a unique sound in its combination of the classical, with modern metal conventions that had not been executed with such precision before. In 1999, the album was remastered and reissued, with two cover songs as bonus tracks, A Fine Day to Die by Bathory, and Gypsy by Merciful Fate. For the reissue, the opening tracks intro and Into the Infinity of Thoughts were combined, whilst the album was packaged in a paper slip case, covering the traditional jewel case, 
with both featuring the same artwork. Track on this masterpiece are 1. Intro 2. Into the Infinity of Thoughts 3. The Burning Shadows of Silence 4. Cosmic Keys to My Creations and Times 5. Beyond a Great Vast Forest 6. Towards the Pantheon 7. The Majesty of the Night Sky 8. I am the Black Wizards 9. Inno a Satana, Italian for him to Satan 1999 Remastered Edition A Fine Day to Die, Bathory Cover Gypsy, Merciful Fate Cover At the end of 1996, the band was joined by TRYM and Alvar on drums and bass, respectively. Emperor entered the studio to record, Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk won the Album of the Year, poll in many metal magazines around the world, including UK Terrorizer and US Metal Maniacs. And it reached number 28 on Finnish album charts. The album was recorded in the Grieg Hall in Bergen, Norway. The opening guitar riff, Ya and Transemperium, is taken from an unnamed Mayhem song. Mayhem guitarist Euronymous is credited in the album liner notes, even though he was murdered three years before the album was written and recorded. A recording of this unfinished track can be found on the Mayhem bootleg, Hot Elm Zalig. Anthems showcases a faster, more guitar-driven performance with less usage of keyboards and more clean singing, and blast beat style drum work. The album's musical approach is explained on the back cover, with a quote that reads, Emperor performs sophisticated black metal art exclusively. As well as, the album's lyrical themes began to move away from nature and satanic elements and began to incorporate more mystical themes. In this album there's greater use of classical flourishes, greater variety in Isen's vocals, more audible guitar interplay between Isen and Samoth, and more complex and melodic keyboard work. It definitely builds on the groundwork laid by extreme metal pioneers, Celtic Frost, and Bathory. Track Alsvargr, The Oath, Opening Track in this album is one of the longest intros to a metal album and indeed one of the most meaningful. Whispers and echoes seemingly stemming from lugubrious looks, and bottomless pits. If I were to describe every track, this text would turn into an essay, so I will just briefly say that the entire album has an almost conceptual feel to it, from the artwork, to the sonic structure it builds from beginning to end, to the lyrics that are really really good. I usually don't care about lyrics, but in this case, they suit the whole so tastefully well that they add to the sense of genius at work. The only thing that kind of made me a bit skeptical were the band photos, of the four guys trying to look impressive in a throne, that just seemed way too big for them to fill. In June 2016, Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk was inducted into Decibel Magazine's Hall of Fame becoming the second Emperor album to be featured in the Decibel Hall of Fame, the first being predecessor in the Nightside Eclipse. In 2017, Rolling Stone ranked Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk as 57th on their list of the 100 Greatest Metal Albums of All Time. In 2018, Loudwire named it the best black metal album of all time. In 2020, Metal Hammer included it in their list of the top 10 1997 albums. In 1998, the album was remastered and re-released with the three non-album tracks from Reverence. The band made a promotional video for The Loss and Curse of Reverence. Track on this album are 1. Ollie's Vardra, The Oath 2. Ya and Transemperium 3. Thus Spake the Night Spirit 4. And Sort Celled by Cows 5. The Loss and Curse of Reverence 6. The Acclamation of Bonds 7 With Strength I Burn 8 The Wanderer Re-release track 9 In Longing Spirit 10 Opus A Satana, orchestral version of Inno A Satana 11 The Loss and Curse of Reverence, Live Soon after this album bassist Alvar left the band, now continuing their career as a trio, with Isen handling keyboards, vocals, guitars and bass, the band recorded their third album, Nine Equilibrium, and toured Europe and North America. The opening track is my personal favorite, Curse You All Men. A pretty good glimpse at the band. 
it's got nice smooth rhythms on top of the double bass and blast beats. There are solos present which really made the song appeal to me. The vocals have the traditional strained black metal shriek which really emphasizes the heaviness of the main riffs. The song as a whole has sort of an evil feel while fast yet slightly repetitive. A good way to catch the ear of a black metal fan. Although Anthems is a practically impossible album to be equaled, Nine Equilibrium, transforms the ideas of the last work in an excellent way, and takes them to a different level, the structure is quite more technical, and more brutal, but the intensity remains. The band's natural virtuosity acts by itself, and here we confirmate the thing that makes Emperor the best unity. Emperor was able to articulate the thematics of the album uniformly, and gave the term, concept album a different view. The theatricality of Emperor is better reflected in the emotions of the album. Here it gives us a landscape of human nature, that from everyone's view is quite exaggerated, but from Emperor's view is essential. Eduardo Rivadavia of All Music describes the album as a sonic onslaught of nearly impenetrable proportions. He noted that drummer TRYM doesn't so much keep time as pummel his kit incessantly, while guitarists Isen and Samoth contribute an equally oppressive wall of sound laced with keyboard textures, so demonic they were seemingly concocted by the great horned one himself. He concluded, far from a masterpiece, but hardly a stinker either, Nine Equilibrium falls quite short of the group's earlier albums through sheer lack, in 2021, it was named one of the 20 best metal albums of 1999, by Metal Hammer magazine Ek of Diversity. Track on this album are 1. Curse You All Men 2. Dechristalizing Reason 3. An Elegy of Icaros 4. The Source of Iconi 5. Sworn 6. No News Equilibrium 7. The Warriors of Modern Death 8. Of Blindness and Subsequent Seers 9. Outro, Hidden Track in 2000 when Samoth and TRYM started to gravitate more towards death metal, while Issen directed his musical exploration towards his side project, Pecatum. Thus, in 2001, Emperor decided to disband after releasing one final album, Prometheus, The Discipline of Fire and Demise, composed entirely by Issen. Prometheus the discipline of fire and demise differs from Emperor's previous recordings with a focus on a more progressive style. This album is actually more along the lines of technical death than black metal in terms of guitar tones and riff structure, but there is still plenty of the darkest of genres left. Symphonic instruments provide atmosphere to nearly every crevice of the album, and the vocals, both black and clean, are done to absolute perfection. Also, every now and then, the guitars slip back into black metal territory. The occasional melodies are also done perfection, and are inserted at exactly the right moments. Being any more detailed than that would be really quite hard to do, as I honestly can't think of any good comparisons, including their own previous material. This is truly an album I have I've never, ever heard before. I would go into a description of my favorite songs, but that would mean describing all nine of them. Seriously. I don't really think it would be the right thing to do. Every song is good enough, and has more than enough individuality to stand on its own, but in all honesty, Prometheus is much better seen as one entity, much the same as how Led Zeppelin felt about their albums. This album failed to chart in North America and Europe. A music video was made for the song Empty and released on October 8, 2000. The album received critical praise from music critics. Reviews from metal-based magazine Kerrang! declared it their album of the week on October 10, comparing it to Metallica's Master of Puppets in terms of quality, while the magazine Terrorizer picked it as album of the month. John Serba of the online music database AllMusic praised the album, stating, those willing to invest a significant amount of time into Prometheus, will be thoroughly rewarded on intellectual and emotional levels. The album was nominated for a Norwegian Grammy Award for Best Metal Album in 2001. Track on this album are 1. The Eruption 2. Depraved 3. Empty 4. The Prophet 5. The Tongue of Fire 
6 in the wordless chamber. 7 Gray. 8 He who sought the fire. 9 Thorns on my grave. After this album Isan said that, when we announced the split up in 2001, we didn't think we would do anything more with Emperor ever again, the decision was also based on the feeling that Emperor had a lot of integrity, and that if we were going to end it, we should end it while we still created great music. For us, the decision was made in the black metal spirit. Since Samoth and I pulled in different directions, we didn't see any point in continuing. The core of the band wasn't intact anymore. Samoth said, at that point, we both had other priorities that we wanted to pursue and we both felt that splitting up Emperor was the best thing to do. We really wanted to focus on other things, and felt it was the only right thing to do. Isan later recalled that when we announced the split up in 2001, we didn't think we would do anything more with Emperor ever again. Following the breakup, Samoth and TRYM continued playing in the Black Can Death Metal outfit Zyklon, while Isan concentrated on his family project Pecatum. Later Isan announced a solo project, much in the vein of Prometheus, the discipline of fire and demise and Pecatum, featuring drummer Askir Mikkelsen of Bortnagar and Vinter Sorg. It has generated positive feedback in the black metal community. The band played a surprise three-song show in Oslo on September 30, 2005, at which they announced a series of full concerts to take place in California, New York City, and Europe in 2006. As of February 2006, they were also scheduled to play at the Inferno Festival in April, and Germany's Wacken Open Air in August. Samoth was unable to take part in the US tour dates, as his conviction for the arson he committed in 1992, due to lengthen the process for his visa application, so Emperor performed without him. On October 7, 2006, Emperor performed at the Under-18 Mostoy Festival in their hometown of Notodden. The band had wanted to do an Under-18 gig and a gig at their hometown, so the festival fit perfectly. It was held at a small venue called Stue, and with only 450 tickets available, the concert quickly sold out. On October 28, 2006, Emperor returned to the UK to play a gig at London's Astoria venue, where the band was warmly greeted by fans. In 2007, Emperor played a series of one-off shows in the United States and two festival gigs in France and Finland. Samoth announced on October 23, 2007, that Emperor had begun preparing a second official DVD release, on December 8, 2008, it was revealed that this release will be called Live Inferno, and come in the form of a double-disc live album and a live DVD, taken from their appearances at Inferno and Wacken Metal Festivals during their brief reunion, it was released on April 16, 2009 in Europe and April 21 in North America. On August 2, 2013, it was announced that Emperor would be reuniting to headline the 25th anniversary Wacken Festival in 2014, in the following months, they were announced as headliners for the 2014 editions of the Bloodstock Open Air and Hellfest festivals. In April 2014, they announced shows in Tokyo and Osaka for July with TRYM playing drums, due to Faust's visa issues. Emperor performing in 2017. On August 12, 2016, it was announced that Emperor would reunite again, in 2017 for a special set of performances to celebrate their 20th anniversary second studio album, Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. On December 27, 2018, the band announced its presentation at the Mexico Metal Fest in Monterrey, Mexico in 2019. Despite playing a handful of reunion shows, Isan has stated that Emperor has no plans to record a new album. He was quoted as saying, it's kind of a lose-lose thing. The whole point of black metal, people want something that is real and has integrity of what it is. At this point, none of us can see any reason to do that beyond what we already do. Emperor Early Days Controversy In 1995, Isan promoted arson in an interview said that, Skjold Church was a large wooden church about 100 years old. 
The church contained an altar board and preaching chair from the 16th century. All this was said to be of historical, Christian value. So it was to be reduced to a pile of ashes. The material damages are said to be of 13 million Norwegian kroners. The church was still being used by a large flock of blind followers. It became a victim for true Norwegian spirit on the 13th of September 1992, during a stormy night. Witnessed by the moon, this symbolic act of anti-Christian war enlightened the night with pagan flames. Even barbarism is on the rise. We will bring back the forgotten past of strength, pride, and victory. However, Issen, in a post-1990s interview, attributed his ties to Satanism as being part of his adolescence. In 2014, Emperor attracted further controversy when the original drummer, Faust, joined them for live performances. Faust is a convicted murderer and caused some upset by being part of the show's band current lineup. Issen, vocals, guitars, keyboards. Samoth, guitars. Trym Torsen, drums. So this is the great history of Mighty Emperor, I hope you guys like it. Please feel free to like share and subscribe to the Black Metal promo, long live black metal.